March is a time for uh, madness. It's also a time for mayhem. So that brings us to our potential mayhem moments presented by all states. Uh, speaking of breakout players, we're going to take a look at a couple breakout teams now who may cause some mayhem. We've talked about some bracket busters, uh, Alexa, but uh, any, any team that could cause some mayhem for you, some complete chaos and just burst an entire bracket? Well, I think we talked about Princeton before, but kind of going off those points, I, I mean, they could potentially play Iowa in the second round. And I'm not saying I think I was going to lose that game with full confidence. <laughs> but a little pause there. I'm just, okay, we got a three-time Ivy League Defensive Player of the Year on that team in yep. Ellie Mitchell. We have Kaylin Chan, as we talked about, Madison St. Rose, and Carla Baruby has won at least one game in every NCAA tournament she's been in. And, the, and when they get to the second round, th those games have been close too. So they've been on the edge of making a Sweet 16. And it would just be a pretty crazy set of circumstances if this is the year that happens and if they take down Caitlin Clark. But I'm not not saying it could happen. You're not not saying that right. it could happen. Right, okay. exactly. <laughs> Very I good. I got that right. <laughs> uh, Autumn, you like Tennessee. I love Tennessee. I mean, I have them in my Elite Eight. You got the orange going Texas. too today. That's right. Was it planned? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but since February 15, they've had to play this South Carolina team who we've been talking about all show long, how they have been untouchable. They've been able to test the Gamecocks, and they had to play them three times. I think you're either tired or you're ready for March and prepared if you have to go up against the number one team in the country. And Rakia Jackson, she's going to take this team far. This team will go as far as she wants them to go. And 19 out of her 22 points came in that second half versus South Carolina. I think she is the cheat code at all times she's impacting the game without even scoring the way she can facilitate for her teammates playing that pick and roll action you name it the way she can body any defender that gets in her way she has that length she's pro ready and she's hard to stop but I really feel like it's going to come down to Tennessee making some noise and they're playing their best basketball at the right time let me guess Ole Miss Ole Miss is, is my <laughs> secret pick. But I'll throw in another one. Okay. You're really talking about really breaking the bracket. It, it, it doesn't often happen that a double-digit seed makes the Sweet 16. But I'm looking at UNLV. I, I, we, they're playing Creighton in the first round. That's a winnable game. If they beat UCLA in round two, that would really be breaking this bracket. Wow. And Lindy LaRock has got a dynasty going on in the desert. They won 30 games again. They haven't gotten over that hump in the NCAA tournament. But I think they can in round one. And then – playing you know UCLA in the second round I'm going to you know take Alexis play and I'm I'm not not saying that they're going to win that That's but if they <laughs> I think they're capable and if they and if they did it would certainly be breaking a lot of brackets All right I see you with the Vegas theme going you gotta stick to I got to give a little love to, a little. The, to the home city here Yeah no I hear you um, Louisville uh, is not my home city but I do think that they could cause some uh, mayhem with a win over LSU. I mean, you talk about mm. a potential head-to-head uh, -head there with Jeff Walls, of course, and HBL. I think that's uh, must-see TV. I'm I don't know. Be I... eating popcorn watching <laughs> that one. I think. I, I, I would be know. pacing my living room floor if during that game. I'd be. I'd be as, as nervous as anybody on the court. I think. <laughs> you think so? I, I don't think there's any bad blood there. I don't think. I don't think HBL left with bad blood. But it's just no. those were those were two competitors going to head-to-head. -to -head, a, a new team for HBL, of course, and. Um, what Jeff Wallace has done with Louisville and the success that they've had over the course of the year. Underwhelming year this year for Jeff, I think, but when it gets to March, he kind of turns into a Tom Izzo-type figure and can take yep. them all the way. So 